Hi everyone, one of my viewers asked me a question which I thought was really um, a useful question because it would be good for all of us to know the answer to that. So basically um, the question was are the Princeton uh, brushes uh, similar to Billy Shawl or do you do you basically can can you substitute it with uh, the Princeton brushes. Now um, I've got a uh, at the moment just this one brush which is a four it's a round brush for by Billy Scholl it's a Kalinsky brush so it's a sable brush um, and the closest uh, size that I have in the Princeton round brush is a size five but when I look at the ferrules they kind of look identical in terms of width so I think it's a good um, comparison here. Now the Princeton is a synthetic brush which was designed to imitate a sable brush so it was um, a first brush that was designed um, to work similar to a sable brush but have more of a control. Now what I've done here is I have a very simple kind of um, watercolor, quick watercolor illustration of the artichoke, the one that I've done from Billy Shovel's um, book, which is hanging on my wall, but this is just a very quick version. So what I attempted to do here was to mix um, watercolors and do different techniques um, with the two brushes. So I used the Billy Shovel brush on the uh, left side and I used the Princeton brush on the right side. Um, what I can say is that uh, the um, Billy's brush is gives you a softer look and with the Princeton brush you get um, kind of more um, more color and I will explain in a second why that is the case. So um, the other thing I want to do is I love these two artichoke um, leaves or petals, I'm not sure what uh, they are referred to in the botanical world but I want to do this one with the billy brush and the one next to it I want to do with the Princeton so that you can see um, how they are um, during the process of working with them. So I've got my Mijello watercolors left here and I'm going to mix up a few colors. So um, I've got the color swatches all here. They're upside down so it should be this way and the swatches are that way. So I'm currently using a little bit of olive green and I'm going to mix in some of the burnt sienna that makes a lovely warm green and I'm going to put more of the olive green so that just warms it up even more makes it a lovely color and I think I'm going to mix up this slightly darker color because towards the right side I have the um, I have the darker I have the shade so it looks darker so I'm going to warm it up with a little bit of this was the Van Dyke green and I'm going to warm it up with lemon yellow and then I'm going to neutralize it with burnt sienna. I now understand the value of this uh, burnt sienna because as you know, if you've been watching for a while, it's not a color I would typically enjoy because it's a neutral kind of, you know, warm brown but um, they do, they are quite useful in terms of mixing. So I'm slowly getting there. A little bit more burnt sienna, not much. This is a bit too much. I'm going to go 
back into Van Dyck green. Okay, so this is right now. It's a nice kind of forest green. All right, so <clears throat> let's start with Billy's brush. Now I'm going to wet it and show you what it looks like once once it's wet, so it's longer and you can see that the belly has become uh, rounder because that's where the water is sitting. Now when I'm going to wash, um, when I'm going to wet the Princeton brush you will see that it's flatter around the belly area, we just hold them next to one another, it is flatter around the belly area so it holds less water in this area and it is not coming to um, the point as I'm just trying to give you a wide background so it's not coming to the point as Billy's does and then I'm going to show you that Billy's is in fact a little bit longer so you can see it's just a touch, but it is definitely a longer um, bristle. And those, that longer part um, gives you that pointy, um, pointy edge to it. Okay, so now let's start with the Billy's brush. And I'm going to go into this lovely green that I mixed up earlier. So the way Billy likes to work is always starting with the glaze first so I'm going to do that here as well now for glazing this brush is uh, great because it holds quite a bit of water and that means that you can cover a good area with the brush you can go obviously a size up which is the six um, to give you even more water but the four is, is perfect for sort of this size of work um, to cover an area that you're going to work on. So you will see later that um, I will need to use the other brush, the Princeton brush, um, quite a few times. Uh, I will need to add water to it because it will start drying out as I'm doing the glaze which can be an interruption. So now I'm just going in with the color that I mixed. And you can see I can do the edges quite easily. And at the same time, if I push on the brush, I also get more color out. But it's quite soft. And the other thing as well, when you're working with this brush, because it's got so much water, it holds quite a bit of water, what happens is that every time you wash your brush out and go into the color, um, the color will dilute slightly. So you have to keep that in mind and you have to potentially dry it out quite a bit before you go into the color. Otherwise, it will just... Um, dilute color very quickly and you'll have to mix up the color again and that dilution as well helps it to keep softer to keep things um, softer as you work so so this is just a very quick kind of way of showing you I'm going to zoom in so you can see a little bit better and I'm going to move onto the um, Princeton brush right now and I don't need to squeeze out water out of this brush at all because like I said it doesn't hold as much water to begin with so when I go into water and I take the brush out it stays pretty much as flat as this so there isn't any need to do that and the other thing is, once you go into the watercolor, you basically pick up the exactly color that's mixed up here 
and when you're putting it onto the paper it's going to be the exact color it's not going to be any softer or any more diluted i just realized i haven't done the glaze so i'm going to go back in and do the glaze now you will see what i mean so although it's a smaller petal so it should probably be enough but because it's not holding enough water it should run out of it faster I have managed to cover the petal now but I need to work really quickly because if I take any longer the, the water will start um, uh, going into the paper and I will have less time to work and so in fact I can see that we are almost there so I need to work really quick to ensure I don't get hard edges. So I'm going to be careful on this edge because the the um, watercolor is still wet and there and I'm going to, as you can see here is already a hard edge so it has dried already uh, in that corner so I'll have to really quickly work and go in and soften it. Let's recap on all the points that I have mentioned and I'll show you some of them. In terms of dry brushing, um, when it comes to Billy's brush, this is the dry brushing I have done on this petal right here. And I'm going to bring it up closer so you can have a look. So this is Billy's brush dry brushing and this is the Princeton dry brushing, which you can see that um, next to it is a fine line with Princeton so it's almost looking like a fine line uh, because it's quite strong but um, that with Billy I always find that um, Billy's brush for dry brushing I need to it's a little bit harder for me to get that sort of look as I have here with Billy's brush because it's um, the bristles being sable they are when I take the moisture out of the brush and put it into this uh, shape right here to do the dry brushing with um, because the bristles are so soft they're going to very quickly lose the um, shape and come together so you have to keep on doing this um, to be able to get the dry brushing technique although Billy is fantastic at that technique but for me being a beginner to botanical art I struggle in it a bit and I could get the dry brushing um, look a lot stronger with this brush because it is a synthetic so once you flatten it like so it's going to pretty much stay like that. It's not going to um, lose its shape. Um, so that way you have more control for dry brushing. Um, when it comes to detailing and fine point, you do um, get more of a fine line with Billy's brush because like I said the bristles come to such a fine tip that you can get thinner lines which with this brush I could get fine lines over here so again that's Billy's brush for fine lines and this is the Princeton for the fine lines over here. Um, I struggle to get the the lines to be as fine with Princeton as I could with Billy's so it was easier to get a finer line with Billy's brush um, so that's a big advantage to this brush being a uh, sable and um, then let's talk about lifting so um, what I found in terms of lifting is that Billy's brush because um, it's uh, again a sable and it can take a lot of water once you dry it out for example now it would be great for lifting and you would go into wet watercolor and try to lift with it it would literally mop up all of the color kind of like sort of suck it up and give you a soft edge uh, while it's doing that however 
when it comes to the Princeton brush, because it doesn't have that capacity, it basically would take some of the uh, watercolor, but it would push the the puddle uh, to to the side instead of mopping it completely. And uh, that would give you kind of when you push watercolor instead of mocking, mopping it and taking it off, giving it a softer look all over, you would get more of an intense look. For example, here, I think it happened and here I tried to mop. So as a result, you can see that the color was pushed and it gives me a, a harder kind of uh, more intense color look over here and a less soft uh, transition. So that's when it comes to lifting and mopping. Um, so yeah, just to, to sum up the, the, the whole thing, I would say that you do not have to purchase Billy's brush to do botanical art. I could easily have done this entire artichoke with the Princeton brush. And in fact, um, the original um, artichoke, when I was painting the um, botanical in the botanical style of Billy Shawl, I have done with my Princeton because at that point I didn't receive the Billy Shawl brush yet. Uh, I don't think I bought it at that point yet. So that was uh, great and, and there were no problems there at all. So you don't have to, but it depends what you like and what kind of um, style you prefer. If you prefer something more softer and more controlled, um, then Billy's brush is great for that. Also, you just need this one brush basically for a size of this uh, illustration. You wouldn't need to go to two brushes. So in with this case, uh, if you really wanted a super fine line that you can get with Billy's brush, you would have to use a second brush, which would be your detail brush, like maybe um, a number one or... So here's a 100% um, Here's a hundred percent cotton Moulin de Roy uh, hot press paper, and all I want to do at the minute is just having a look of what of a fine line I can get. So the the this brush that I'm going to use is the Princeton number no. five, and I'm just going to try and create as fine of a point as I can. So. You can see that the 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 line is quite fine. So it's not bad. Um but if you would want something even finer, let's see, I've got the number one here. This is the smallest Princeton brush that I have. So let's see what how fine this line would be. So you get a finer line with it. See better. And now let me try Billy's brush. And I'm going to try and demonstrate that you can achieve two. So if I'm just going to do a regular kind of line so let me see if I can achieve this um, these fine lines because that's what I remember I could achieve in my peony illustration so just on the very last hairs there you go you can see how super fine you can get barely touching the paper how beautifully fine the lines could be um, it's a sable brush so these are a little bit more consistent because they are synthetic and you have more control with them they have more of a um, 
the softer the bristle, the less control you have. And therefore you have to be really good at it to be able to um, draw a consistent line, which I have seen Billy do all the time. But like I said, I'm a beginner. So, but this was just to demonstrate to you that, you, you know, you can, um, you won't, you won't be able to get these two um, uh, variations in the line with the Princeton uh, size 5 whereas you can get that in um, Billy's size 4 so um, I hope this was useful to you it was definitely interesting for me to find out how um, different these two brushes are and yeah I'm definitely happy I have um, added it to my watercolor brush uh, collection because it's a sable brush and at the moment I didn't have any sable brushes so um, it's good to have a sable brush they feel like they're higher quality um, but they are they do you need to get used to them um, at in the beginning especially they might feel like hard work um, but once you try them out in your sketchbook um, quite quickly you get used to them and um, you get used to the control you get out of them. So thanks for watching and see you soon.